now the amazing listening, mixing, recording yeah. spot. Immediately what stands out is those PMCs. Yes, and those actually, my good friend Ryan Hewitt um, passed those on to me. Um, I moved into this room and I was a, I had been on the Proax Studio 100s forever. Yeah. And love them. Once I got into this room, I was working for four months and I was like, oh, wait a second. I think I need bigger speakers. Yeah. Ryan was in LA and doing he, chili peppers. Doing and chili peppers. Yeah. And the whole thing was, and he had his whole studio in storage. I just called him saying, hey, what would you suggest for my room? And he's like, dude, like my PMCs are literally sitting in storage. He's Aww. like, to just, why don't you like try them out for a few months? And I was like, you are a godsend, thank you. And then I put them up and was like, okay, <laughs> now yeah. we're cooking with gas kind yeah. of a thing. That's a big adjustment going from just having the pro axe much closer. Yes. And then having three or four feet yep. away from Because you. I was in a shallower room before this, well, I was in a, a similar setup, but I was work, basically working with this kind of a um, depth. Oh, okay, yeah. So I was only about 20 feet deep, and it was a little more dead in that room, and the, the pro axe made a lot of sense. And I had a sub, you know. Sure. Um, but yeah, that, these have been amazing. And then, you know, having these just for reference has been a good move. I, I just added those to the setup like a year ago. I haven't just judged. to check where's my vocal really sitting at. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not a mixer, but I'm st starting to mix more just based on, I love getting a mix as far as it can go before yeah. it goes to a mixer. And then sometimes it ends up being like, you know what, we love where this is, let's, it's at the two yard line. Yeah. Let's put it over. So. Sweet. And then you've got the output desk and the sidecar. Yeah, I, you know, that's new too. I, I just kind of was using like an old work desk. It was like a crafting desk. I was gonna have um, somebody custom make a desk and I was like, you know what? I just like how it's set up. Yeah. And then I asked some friends like, is it solid enough? Does it work? And they're like, yeah. And I just kind of was like, you know what? For the price and for what I need it for, this is perfect. I feel good about that. Um, this is pretty much my vocal chain 90% of the time is the 1073 into the Retro 176. Yeah, those BAEs are fantastic. Those are great. That was my very first pre that I ever bought. And I just kind of saved up at that, that. Gosh, I probably had that since 2010. And it's just been unbelievable. Like. It almost like it's like it keeps getting better. But I knew at that moment, I was like, if I'm gonna go in on it, I'm just gonna go big and yeah. get the one that I'll never ever regret or ever really wanna sell. And is this the master bus thing, the 52? Yeah, that, yeah. And that's newer, um, it's a diode compressor. And I've really loved that, running it parallel. Like one thing I've done is run the um, R88 as an overhead mm -hmm. on the drums and run it parallel. I've sent the coals through it on the piano. It's, I really, really like it. it. It's like a perfect amount of coloring and just has that Neve sound. And then the retro compressor, right? Yes. What's the, what is this called? What's it's the just the it? 176. 176, mm -hmm. okay, nice. That was like that one thing that was just night and day when I got it set up, especially with vocals and yeah. bass and drums. And But like, oh my gosh, the vocal difference is just huge. Crazy. That's fun, dude. But Are you still using the 17 on vocals? I do, yeah. 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 Still through, through the BAE and the retro? Exactly. Yeah, yep. that's a yep. dangerous change. It is. It's like, it's just, it's instantaneous. You're like, okay. And then here we have a couple of the retro 500 series, which I really like right now. Those are tubes. So right now all my synths are going through that. I don't know if this is mag or mog. It's like moog or moog, yeah. whatever. It's um, mag. Is it mag? <laughs> I, you got them both wrong. Um, <laughs> no, that was that's great. I love that's actually been really cool on vocals as well. Um, you have the air gain and everything. You can kind of boost those higher frequencies. And then I've been really impressed with the Neve, the Rupert, the 511. Oh, cool. Um, I really like the way it sounds. Okay. What are you using it on? Um, right now, I don't think I have it on anything right. But I was running the 440 on the drums through it. And oh, I cool. really dug it because you can add this texture, the silk the here. Silk, yeah which is just nice, nice kind of for that up, up, upper mid boost as well, or just to kind of saturation. And the burls on the coals? The burls are, yeah, and I've had those for a while and I really loved those. How would you describe those? Are they they're, more transparent or are they fatter? I think they're fatter. They're like, mm. they're more fat to me and they do have a color and it's kind of mm -hmm. just more of that thicker 
buttery thing. Yeah. I've actually really liked those on drums. Um, I've done the 88 as an overhead on those. And then of course, you know, these, the 512s are just loud and good. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so those have been great. Got a 165A, that's pretty rare in a home studio. Man, I love this so much. I got it because of drums, because I've worked with an engineer in town named Logan Matheny, who's incredible, and he turned me on to this. And it does this thing, like for snare drum or overhead, there's that snare sound, and I can't describe it any other way, where you get enough in and out on the compression where it sounds almost like a beatbox. Oh, it's okay. like a it does that thing oh, okay. where there's like it pushes that tone um, and you can even EQ it after that and push that like 120, 150 where it hits you in the chest. Mm -hmm. And it it does, uh, you know, Tame and Paula's on it does this, like that oh, those drum sick. tones. It's like I've even done like bass through this and jacked it so that it's like basically acting as an amp parallel. Nice. That's been amazing. Yeah, I just I've done vocals through it, like for an affected kind of like gnarly vocal. I just love it. It's it's so good. And then you're rolling with the Apollo X16. You got mm -hmm. the X4 over there and a satellite. Yep. Lots of DSP. Yes. Gas. Yep. And I see you got Ableton Live open here. Yes. Tell me about that. What do you is that what you're rolling on mainly? I roll that on that mainly. I started in Pro Tools okay. and then as I got more into writing and production, I love how quick and intuitive and inspiring Ableton is. Mm -hmm. It's just so easy for me, like the way the MIDI is set up, the way it's integrated. Up like any DAW, there's totally annoying things. Yeah. <laughs> there's like, like if this was just 10% more like Pro Tools, it'd be perfect. And then <laughs> if Pro Tools was like a little bit more like Ableton, it'd be perfect. But sure. basically the way that it's just recently come down to my workflow is from inception of a song, it's Ableton till about 80% because I mix as I go, okay. and yeah. then if, I, if I'm if i mixing it, yeah. I transfer it to Pro Tools. Yeah. And because it's just way more intuitive. I've, I've gotten quicker at editing in Ableton, so I don't have really complaints with that. Drum editing in Ableton is not the best because the way that the warp works and everything. Mm -hmm. But if you're editing one single piece of audio and quantizing it, yeah. it's Great. incredible. Yeah. So it's like anything, there's amazing things about it, but it's not, you know, it started as a DJ DAW primarily. Yeah. And it's granular, so it's sampling everything. And that that's what I learned the difference was in Pro Tools is, um, but I still, I go into Pro Tools more often now. But yeah, I just love that's how cool. fast and intuitive Ableton is for creativity.